please stand for the invocation. Father in heaven, I bow before you as your humble servant this morning. Father, we come before you today, not because we are worthy, but because we need you. Father, this 2017 University Convocation represents the beginning of another academic year and the commemoration of 121 years of service of an institution that first opened its doors November 16, 1896 to a group of 16 students of color. We stand before you, Father, today with a student body almost 1,700 strong. Fathers of People United, we are reminded that the original 300 acres of land, a former slave plantation with its tower and oak trees, was envisioned by Ellen G. White as a training ground for people of color. Oakwood University now sits on 1,186 acres of land, land built on the backs of former slaves and was once the home of former slave Dred Scott. Father, this institution, we are united and committed to transforming lives and to preparing a cadre of individuals who enter these world's walls to learn so that they may depart to serve. And so, Father, we come before you this morning to consecrate our lives to you. We recognize that this means that our lives are no longer ours, but rather yours, and we can no longer make any claims. As the psalmist David reminds us in Psalm 124, that if, we had, if it had not been for you on our side, and so, Father, as we begin this academic year, we offer up our bodies as a living sacrifice unto you, which is our true and reasonable service. For we know that our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. This is my prayer. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated, please. Thank you, Dr. Ben Marshall. Today we gather at the beginning of another school year as we gather in community to consecrate anew, ourselves anew, to the mission of this great institution. As has already been prayed and mentioned, we were founded in 1896 and for over 120 years, Oakwood University has continued its mission of transformational education. This morning, we wish to welcome all of our guests, especially those who are watching by live stream. We want you to know that Oakwood University is on a mission. We welcome, to, we welcome all of our guests. This mission that we refer to has distinguished this institution from its very founding. This morning, we wish to acknowledge all of the contributors to that mission. First, we begin by stating that we come together as a single learning community, pre-K all the way through to the graduate level. And so this morning, we begin by welcoming all of our younger friends, the little children, for whom education is the key to access and gateway to greater opportunities to service. We wish to acknowledge them this morning. And so this morning, I wish to acknowledge our wonderful students from Oakwood Elementary, would you please stand and be acknowledged? All of our elementary students who are here today. When Moses was leaving Egypt, he said, we go with our young. And I'm reminded that this institution can go no faster than their little feet can travel. This morning, we also wish to welcome all of our academy students who are here from Oakwood Academy. Would you stand, please, all of our academy students, nine through 12. These are the pipeline partners of our institution, and we are proud that you are here today. Welcome. And then, of course, we wish to welcome especially all of our university students who are here today from Oakwood University from freshmen all the way through to our graduate programs, including LEAP. Would you stand, students, as we acknowledge you? And of course, as we think about the work of Oakwood University and Oakwood Elementary and Oakwood Academy, Nothing would be possible without the administrations of these varied institutions. So I'd like the administrators of both Oakwood Elementary and Academy, as well as Oakwood University, to please stand. Thank you. 
Thank you. On the university side of this conversation, we appreciate the work of our dedicated faculty. They labor on missionary wages. That sounds fair. And they do so untiringly, and they transmit all of the learning that they have acquired. They readily, easily, and yes, greedily share that with each of you so that each of our students can go out and to continue the mission of this institution where they have entered to learn and departed to serve. And so this morning, I would like to invite our faculty to stand, the faculty that I believe is one of the finest faculties anywhere in the United States of America. Would you stand, please, faculty members? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our faculty represent the frontline deliverers of our mission, but they could not do it alone because we have dedicated staff members and I like to say that our staff members are the wheels on the wagon. They keep the wagon rolling from day to day. And so staff, we'd like to have you stand please so that we may acknowledge the work that you do for this institution. Please know that your work is remembered and it is esteemed. And I've thought about this for a little while, and now I think I've finally figured out a way to do something that I've been wondering about for a while. It's clear that at graduation, we have a number of ways to acknowledge our faculty, but I've often wondered what is the best way to acknowledge staff? Where could we do it in a broad enough forum that would say that it is significant and equally significant to the work that's happening on our faculty? And so I've decided that as we go forward with university convocation, we will also use this as an opportunity to acknowledge our staff members. And so today, I wish to acknowledge two departments within staff who if their work does not take place, everyone seems to notice it, but when their work and when they are working at their best, often we take it for granted because it is the way it is supposed to be. This morning, I'd like to announce that we're going to acknowledge two of our staff departments, and we'd like to present them with gift certificates after this ceremony by tomorrow. <laughs> I'd like Grounds and Custodio to please stand. Come on, Grounds and Custodio, come on. Grounds and Custodio. Yeah. Yeah. Carlos and Sarah, thank you for leading your team so effectively. They report to the finance division and we thank you for the work that you do. And with that, we'd like to pay a quick tribute, of course, to another special group who is here with us today. And we thought that it was important that that our guests who are visiting from the Department of Defense get the opportunity to see what Oakwood is at its heart and at its core and what it stands for. We've enjoyed a wonderful couple of days with the Department of Defense under their Pentagon Comes to the People program in which a number of our students have already made contacts for internships and residencies. But I want to especially acknowledge them this morning because Oakwood University is a special place. And not only do we turn out students who go out to serve, but they also go out to make this a better country and the places they return to better countries. So this morning, we'd like to have them to please stand. I'd like all of our guests who are here with the Department of Defense, who are here for the Pentagon Comes to the People, I'd like you to stand please because we would like to acknowledge you this morning. We want to acknowledge, of course, we want to acknowledge, of course, the organizer, the engine who did this. And so, Mr. Oakwood, where is Juwan? Juwan? Juwan, would you please escort Dr. Dorothy Houston to the stage, please? Doctor? Dr. Houston, we appreciate your commitment to selfless service. I know that you try to stay in the background when you're planning these things, 
but we want to thank you on behalf of the entire Oakwood community for the opportunities that you have made available to our students across the last two days. So thank you very much for your selfless service to Oakwood University. We're also honoring today our Oakwood University Aeolians with a cake and punch reception to which all of you are invited and it will take place. Come on, everybody, come on. Thank you. I'll say a little bit more during my presentation about their contributions and their work and their awards and honors. But you should know that we're very proud of our Aeolians as well as the director, Dr. Jason Ferdinand. Thank you so very much, and we will acknowledge them and honor them. This cake and punch reception will take place immediately after our convocation. And we're welcoming someone who is to our community today who for the first time is standing in a new role. Dr. Cowick Wilson comes to us as Provost and Senior Vice President. Dr. Wilson, would you stand, please? Please stand. Let us receive him warmly. You will get to know him better. He is an accomplished academic and will make a tremendous contribution. And he will stand on the shoulders of our former provost and senior vice president, Dr. Tim McDonald, who I see is right there. Dr. McDonald, thank you for your service. Last, but this is certainly not least, Oakwood exists for students. You will hear that theme again. Today, I wish to acknowledge those students who represent excellence at the high school level. They are valedictorians and salutatorians, and they have chosen to receive their college university education at Oakwood University. I'd like you to stand, please, all of the young people, all the valedictorians and salutatorians, as we acknowledge you this morning. Thank you and God bless you. And now we will have a special welcome from the president of our United Student Movement, Mr. Andrew Taylor. Good morning. I am so happy to be able to welcome you all to our convocation service today. Welcome Oakwood Academy and Oakwood Elementary. Welcome staff and faculty. We're extremely grateful for all of you. Um, I see Dr. Allen, just special shout out to him. Um, Welcome students, my fellow uh, classmates and um, fellow students, welcome to our chapel service today. Um, I don't want to spend too much time, Dr. Paula has covered everything, but I just wanted to let you all know I am an Oakwood University Aeolian. And so when you all stood up and clapped for them, that, that made me feel very special. But just because I get a chance to welcome you all and to welcome the Aeolians, I need you all one more time to put your hands together for the choir of the world. Please make it, make it, yes, I need to hear it. And for our director of the world, Jason Max Ferdinand. Thank you um, very much. And um, just briefly, so I am you all's United Student Movement president for the 2017-2018 school year. And our theme this year is a, an experience worth fighting for. So just so you know, we are here, Oakwood University students, to fight for you and let God use us to get some things done this year in a very positive way. So thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Some, some, thank you so much, Andrew. Some, some have asked, what is Oakwood doing uh, for the victims of Hurricane Harvey? And so today, we have some announcements, some activities that are taking place that will be of assistance. And I'd like Chaplain Andrew Pelleggi. Where is Chaplain Pelleggi? Chaplain Pelleggi, let us welcome him, everybody. He is new to the Oakwood University Office of Spiritual Life. 
And he's going to give you some very clear instructions about the work that Dr. Richardson and he have organized to respond to this crisis and to give our students the opportunity to support and assist in the recovery and service efforts to Houston. Thank you, Dr. Pollard. Good morning, family. Um, on this past Tuesday, Chaplain Mann was able to organize a 12 o'clock prayer service where we gathered and took prayer requests and had a season of prayer. Uh, we had that for, of course, the victims of this recent hurricane, and it was actually featured on our local news channel. That focus was prayer. Well, you know, the word tells us that faith without works is dead. So over the past few days, we've been able to set up a pathway to giving directly to Southwestern Regional Conference, which oversees a territory impacted by Hurricane Harvey. During times of disaster, the most impactful donations are monetary gifts to the local organizations on the ground that are best able to determine how to use those funds. And so giving is simple. All you have to do is send a text message. You have your phones with you? Pull your phones out, family, come on. Pull your phones out. And I'm gonna give you a simple instruction. Now, by sending this message, you are not bound to give, but I want to show you how simple it is. If you just take out your phone, launch your messaging service. For those of you that are blessed to have Apple, that's iMessage, amen. <laughs> You're going to send the message, listen carefully, TX flooding, all one word, TX flooding, to the number 71777. TX flooding to the number 71777. You'll receive a reply with a link. Simply click on the link. It'll take you to, to a donation page. There are different options for the amounts that you will give, or you can select the other option and give as much or as little as you can, whatever you can afford. At the end of this service, for those who may not give electronically, but you have some cash donations that you would like to give towards this effort, we will have students and individuals stationed near the exits with buckets. You can place that in those buckets. Whatever offering you have, we would appreciate. However, there's more. The Office of Spiritual Life and Mission is also organizing a mission trip to Houston. This will be a campus-wide effort, and we are looking from volunteers, students, faculty, staff, and administration. We are looking to leave within the next few days, and so we will have a table set up in the lobby right after service. Come by, give us your information, and then shortly after, you will receive an email with further instructions as we begin to finalize the plans to head to Houston. Please note, Please note that you will not receive consideration when it comes to classes and everything else. And when I mean consideration, excuses from classes and so on. If you choose to take part in any event that is not sponsored by the university. So we look forward to your participation in active service for Christ as we become his hands and feet to Houston. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Two final recognitions, both of which are vitally important to all the work that happens at Oakwood University. First, the people upon whose shoulders we stand, our retirees. Dr. McDonald, you and others represent so much. You're a treasure to this institution. We have, we have progressed based upon your sacrifices, and we thank you. Dr. McDonald, would you stand, and if there are other retirees who are here as a representative of this august group, we'd like to acknowledge you, please. Thank you. And are there others who are here today? Thank you, Dr. McDonald. And then, of course, Oakwood is a community that goes beyond the borders of this campus, but within the borders of this campus, we thank God for the tremendous dedication of our local pastors who are here today to assist with the consecration service. And so we'd like to acknowledge our pastors, beginning with Pastor Bird, pastor of this wonderful church, the Oakwood University Church, and then our other pastors who are here from the community. If you are here, would you stand, please, and we will acknowledge you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. We see you and we thank you for your service.
Good morning. Please join us in singing our Oakwood University alma mater. It can be found on the last page of your program. Please stand with me. Thank you. As you remain standing, <laughs> we will share the litany for this school year. It is printed in your program. In this convocation service, we, the Oakwood University, gather to consecrate this school year to God's sacred purpose, the transformational mission of Christian education. We have stood on the shoulders of our pioneers who sacrificed time, talent, and treasure in anticipation of our faithfulness. They died in faith, not having received the promise, but believing that without us, they would not be made perfect. In humility, we acknowledge their sacrifices to establish the mission of Opal. God, we pray today that we will be faithful in living the legacy of faith and mission anticipated by those pioneers who went before us. On the blood-soaked sod of this former slave plantation, Oakwood University stands as an international beacon of hope. Beneath the echoing cries of our suffering ancestors, we as a family face the future, unafraid. In the light of our calling, God, we look to you, our sustenance and strength. This year, we seek first the kingdom, knowing that all else will be added as we trust you. God, we pray today that we will always make you first. First in our affections, first in our priorities, first in our relationships, and first in our commitments. Oakwood is in the business of transforming lives. Our calling for 120 years has been to build lives for our master's service. However, we realize that at the end of our very best efforts, except the Lord build a house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord build a teacher, we labor in vain to build one. Except the Lord build a house, they labor in vain that build it. Except 
except the Lord build a house, they labor in vain that build it. We who are faculty members entrusted with the ministry of teaching, committing ourselves to integrating faith into our interaction with our students. We regard our service to our students as a sacred trust. We commit ourselves to reflecting the power and mission and grace of Jesus Christ. God, we commit to leading students to the foot of the cross in word and example. We will seek the salvation of lost students. We will facilitate the education of saved students and we will celebrate the graduation of educated students. We will steward the human and financial resources of our institution in the fear of God. All of our institutional resources belong to God and we will seek Him first in making mission-focused decisions regarding our finance and personnel. God first will guide us in every decision that affects our institution. God of all labor and stewardship, we, we commit, commit ourselves to performing the ministry of support to your, to your institution, institution and its mission. We affirm the dignity of our labor. Our master was a carpenter for God. We affirm that we work for you and that we labor not as merely people pleasers, but as ministers who work for God. God, for 120 years, you have brought students to this institution from every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. As stewards of your mission to our students, we, the older adults of our community, commit to reflecting Christian care for every student from our elementary academy or university. We will treat every student with respect, kindness, and courtesy. Our God. For the privilege of studying at an anointed institution, we offer praise. For the privilege of learning from a God-loving teacher, we offer praise. For the privilege of associating with more godly young people than we knew existed, we offer more praise. And for the privilege of living and learning and loving in this place called Oakwood, we offer abundant and inexpressible praise. Many of our friends did not make it to Oakwood, but by your grace, we did. Financial challenges did not overcome us. Unbelieving peers did not block us. Satanic temptations did not destroy us. By your grace, we arrived at Oakwood full of hope and joy. Thus, we believe that we have nothing to fear for the future, except we forget how you led us in the past. Thank you, our God, for leading us to this sacred place. God, you have heard our convictions, our covenants, and our commitments. Now, accept this offering of praise that arises from contrite hearts. Together, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, we will praise you. You are first in our worship, first in our prayers, and first in our praise. We will lift you up by putting you first every day of this new school year. May God bless you. Please remain standing. Good morning, Oakwood. Um, scripture today will be taken from Psalms 124, 124 verses 1 through 8. Um, when you have it, say amen. Okay. The Lord, the defense of his people. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us. Then they would have swallowed us alive when their wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters would have overwhelmed us. The stream would have gone over our soul. The flood would have engulfed us. The torment would have slept over us. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us as prey to their teeth. Our soul has escaped as a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we have escaped. 
Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. May the Lord add his rich blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word.
I remind you that <clears throat> today's chapel is an extended chapel. <laughs> Though this message is not an extended message. But I do remind you that today's chapel is an extended chapel. Let us pray. Now, Lord, as we meditate together, we pray that you would bless this address entitled, The Power of a People United, in Christ's name, amen. While this may date some of us, in the Peanuts cartoon series, one day, as per Charles Schultz, Lucy was sitting in the living room, walked into the living room, and there she saw Linus. You'd have to look this up, young people. There she saw Linus, peanuts. And Linus, uh, she, she walked up to Linus and she, she said to Linus, get up and change the channel. So it's already dated, isn't it? Because now we're talking about getting up and changing the channel. Ah, uh, but you know something, Linus was hesitating because he really didn't want to be bothered. Now, now you've got to understand that the Lucy character was the poster child for the obnoxious student. She was, she was. She was just the poster child for that. We might even call it bullying today. Uh, so she walks over to Linus and threatening him with her fist if he didn't do what she asked, Linus now says to Lucy, what makes you think that you can walk in here and take over? And Lucy comes very close to him and she raises her hand and she says, these five fingers individually they are nothing but when I curl them together like this they form a powerful weapon that is terrible to behold well you know the rest of the story a sheepish Linus now terrified says all right what channel do you want and he gets up and he slinks over toward the television to change the channel. But as he does so, he looks down at his own hand and he says, why can't you guys work together like that? <laughs> this morning, I'm declaring to you that we as individuals and as a community can come together to create something powerful, like an iron fist that will smash down obstacles and abolish roadblocks and hammer out opportunities and even decide on embattled causes because yes we can remember during world war ii it was when the allies united that they defeated nazism with its erroneous theology of aryan supremacy when five fingers formed a fist that hateful ideology was knocked down. And even though today, in its last gasping breaths, that twisted ideology continues to claim casualties like Heather he Heyer in Charlottesville and hundreds of others before us, be, be reminded that it was when a generation that was united under President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, that it was under that generation that an entire generation stood against Nazism and crushed it because nothing, nothing, nothing is more powerful than a people who are united by their mission. Now every year for the last five years, I've enjoyed the privilege of leading a group of student leaders to Washington, D.C. under something that we call the President's Leadership Tour. On this tour, you'll have um, USM and Miss Oakwood and Miss UNCF and AY and a few others. And we get to tour all of those leadership sites of, of, of Washington, D.C. And I'm always interested when, when, when we visit the Holocaust Museum as we did the first time, as we entered into the museum, we walk in and there is a gallery where one, as one is beginning to exit, there is a gallery and it's an open space, probably as large as this space before the platform here. And there in that gallery are hundreds and hundreds of children's shoes. The shoes of deceased children who were gassed in the gas chambers of Nazism. And you should hear, what did we do before cell phones? Thank you. Great reflexes, thank you, Pastor. <laughs> and, and hundreds and hundreds of children, their shoes are all there and you can still smell, the, 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 you can still sense the smell of this aged leather 
as you look down and it's, it's, it's sobering. And had not a group of people united, there would have been thousands and thousands and thousands of more children's shoes that would be enshrined in a perpetual monument to the basest part of human nature. Ah, but it was stopped. Because nothing is more powerful than a people united by a common mission. You don't believe it? Ask the 13 colonies. In 1776, New Hampshire and Massachusetts and Connecticut and Rhode Island and New York and New Jersey and Pennsylvania and Delaware and Maryland and Virginia and North Carolina and South Carolina and Georgia came together and united in a freedom fighting coalition that ended up with the creation on July 4th of 1776 of the United States of America. You don't believe it? Go to 1955. A 26-year-old pastor named Martin from Montgomery and a local seamstress named Rosa stood together and gathered a group of freedom fighters called the Montgomery Improvement Association. And on December 1st, they declared that they would boycott the buses of Montgomery, Alabama. And little did they know that because they had united against oppression, they were, they were, they were creating, they were launching the greatest nonviolent revolution in modern history. Why? Because nothing is more powerful than a people united by their mission. Still don't believe me. 1865. A group of young religious leaders united to form the Seventh-day Adventist Church with its holistic emphasis on whole person development, mental, physical, and spiritual development. And they created a movement that they very closely attached, not simply an ecclesiastical movement, but they created a movement that they attached to education and health care. And today, Oakwood University, as well as hundreds of educational institutions, are monuments to their vision. Why? Because nothing is more important, nothing is more powerful, nothing is more impactful than a people who are united by their mission. Now move up to 1891. An American prophet stands before the General Conference of her World Church Assembly on March 21st, 1891. And she decides to proclaim a sermon that's entitled, Our Duty to the Colored People. And in this study, in this sermon, she calls for racial reform expressed in the tangible actions of reaching out to four million colored citizens in the South trapped in poverty and misery and soon, though she would soon be exiled to Australia. She wrote these powerful words, start a school at Huntsville. Now Huntsville then, in 1890s, was a small textile town that had been founded by John Hunt in 1805. It was a moderate city of the South. And she picked Huntsville because she said that there in Huntsville, there was another school and the white citizens were accustomed to seeing colored youth be educated. It was called the normal school, Alabama A&M. And she said, so put Oakwood there because there will be less resistance than there would be in a place like Mississippi or Georgia. And she picked this little textile town founded by John Hunt in 1805, a moderate city of the South. Now sometimes when you tell people that you're going to Oakwood, they say, where is that? And you say, Alabama. <laughs> and then you get a raised eyebrow or a furtive glance in which you say, Alabama? You know, so many people discriminate against us because of our last name, Alabama. Ah, and they say, why are you going down there? And their images of Alabama have to do with the images of the 1960s and the Civil Rights Movement. Ah, but Huntsville is a different place now. 
Who knew that when she planted it in Huntsville, that 100 years later, there would be 194,000 city residents? Who knew that this little sleepy textile town would now become a modern technopolis? Who knew that 10% of the, that there would be more than 100 languages and dialects spoken here in this city of Huntsville? Who knew that by, night, by 2034, it is predicted that there will be a half million citizens here? Who knew that right here in Huntsville, industry targets like defense defense and aerospace and information technology and cybersecurity and advanced manufacturing and life sciences that it would all huddle right here and that this sleepy little town would now become America's space capital with more engineers per capita than any other city in the United States. And students, remember now, it is predicted, it is predicted that between 2001 and, and between 2016 and 2025, there will be at least 40,000 new jobs added to Huntsville, Alabama and its economy. Little did anyone know that Huntsville would become a major technopolis. And as our students learned yesterday during our Pentagon Comes to the People presentation, there are wonderful opportunities right here. Huntsville is one of the best kept secrets in all of the United States. And when you embed yourself here at Oakwood University, you are embedding yourself in the Silicon Valley of the South. Who knew that when she planted Oakwood here, that that little school that began with 16 students on a farm, that 16 students, that that little school would one day be recognized by national media and business and education. Who knew that that little school, Oakwood Industrial School, would one day rise to be noted in U.S. News and World Reports as perennially among the best colleges, both in terms of historically black colleges and universities and regional colleges of the South. Who knew that this school would one day rank among the top 10 HBCUs with the highest graduation rates among HBCUs? Who knew that this little school that was founded with 16 teenagers in its first ever HBCU ranking, it would be named the top ranked science program in 2012? Who knew that Oakwood would one day be the nation's fifth ranked producer of undergraduate black applicants to medical schools, according to the Association of American Medical Colleges? Who knew that Oakwood would one day be the first school to receive the coveted ISO 9001 certification? Who knew that in 2008 that it would be the first and only HBCU to acquire this certification and thus make it very attractive to contractors? Yeah, yeah, from 16 students to now a $50 million annual budget to five schools and 16 departments and 47 degree programs. This little school in 2012 had an accreditation score, if we quantify it, of 98.9. Who knew? that this school would one day rise to not only recover industry, but become the owner of two nationally franchised edible arrangement stores. Who knew that Oakwood Farms would be resurrected? Who knew that this school would, would accomplish more than $25 million of bin, building uh, reno renovation? Who knew that Oakwood University would launch Healthy Campus 2020, which has now been recognized by Partnership for a Healthier America as the premier wellness program on campus? Campuses. Who knew? Who knew that Life Corps would be created or that we'd create the Anna Knight Center for Women's Leadership? Who knew that Oakwood University would now, for four consecutive years, be the Home Depot Retool Your School winners? Who knew that Oakwood University would one day have a basketball team <laughs> that would win two national basketball championships? and three Honda Campus All-Star Championships. Who knew that this little university started on a farm as Oakwood Industrial School, where there was shoe making and horseshoe, horseshoe making and carpet making when you read the early sign? Who knew that one day we would send a group of students to Cincinnati to sing praises to their God in 2012, and they would come back with three gold medals in the World Choir Games. And who knew 
that on July 8th of 2017 that the Oakwood Aeolians would be named the Choir of the World in Wales. Who knew that? And our own Jason as director of the entire festival. Who knew that? Who knew it? God knew it. God knew it. Oakwood. Let me tell you something. Oakwood has been blessed. And today, we gather together, faculty, staff, students, and we stand united in our mission. United. I said united. United, though ethnically diverse. United, though generationally diverse. Students from pre-K to middle schoolers, 6 through 8, 9 through 12, from millennials to Generation Zs to retirees. United, but diverse. From the original 16 students to a globally diverse learning community, faculty, staff, and students with roots that reach back to Argentina, Antigua and Barbuda, um, Barbuda Barbados, Bahamas, Bermuda, Canada, Ivory Coast, France, Grenada, <laughs> Grenada, is that you? Grenada, Guyana, Kenya, Martinique, Montserrat, Haiti, Haiti, Dominican Republic, India, Pakistan, Guadeloupe, England, Madagascar, the Philippines, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Nigeria, South Korea, Mexico, Trinidad and Tobago, Russia, Virgin Islands, South Africa, Zimbabwe, Jamaica. It always works. Rwanda. I'm just looking at the faculty here. Rwanda. American Samoa. Yeah, thank you, Julie. I, I, I met her. I we met a student from Samoa the other day. Yes. Cambodia. Yes. Thailand. Yes. Oh, one of you. Yes. Yes. Fr from red beans and rice to rice and peas to black beans and rice from bonjour to guten tag. To Anyang Haseyo, to Bonjia, to Magandang Umaga, to Buenos Dias, to Ake and Sawfish, to Tamales and Egg Rolls, Pancakes, Crepes, <laughs> to Roti. <laughs> All of these things say, that we can be diverse and still united to our mission. Now, recent events, recent events from the tragedy, stay with me, I'm wrapping up, from every, everything from the tragedy of Charlottesville to the previous week's activities in Arizona indicate that ours is a nation deeply divided. Contentious debate in Washington, D.C ideological replace and repeal efforts. We have work to do. We need to, we need to kill the school to prison pipeline. We've got work to do. Voter reform. Let me say something to you young people. It's easy to stand on the outside of systems and throw stones. But if you are not satisfied with the way community policing takes place, become a police person. Join the force. And as President Obama used to say, don't you miss him? And as President Obama used to say, be the change that you want to see. And you don't have to be perfect to do this. Marvel Comics this summer rele released a new Netflix series called The Defenders. Now, what I like about this Marvel Comics treatment 
is that these seem to be fairly ordinary New Yorkers. <laughs> they contain characters who do not have necessarily anything in common except one thing. They want to keep New York safe. There's Matthew, Mad Matthew Murdoch, a blind attorney who becomes daredevil. There's Jessica Jones, who was irradiated with radioactive material in the accident that killed her mother and her brother and her dad. There's Luke Cage. <laughs> Blessed with supernatural strength and impenetrable skin. Now, I, 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 okay, just, I know we're diverse, but you know, if you're gonna be a black superhero, I guess your skin better be impenetrable. <laughs> Luke Cage, I like him, Luke Cage. And then there's Danny Rand, who is Iron Fist, who was raised in a mystical city which materialized in the Himalayas and was founded by extraterrestrials. You know Marvel, Marvel Comics. But, but, but this is, watch this, watch this now. This is what makes the series work. Here is what makes it work. Here is what makes it work. Each one of the heroes and the Shiro is burdened with their own personal challenges and failings, similar to you and me. But the one thing that links them is their determination to save New York City. Now follow me now, follow me. Like the Defenders, we don't have to be flawless we can be flawed, but focused. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Stay with me. It is Adventist perfectionism that often generates a level of dissatisfaction with people around us. Because after all, if I can't reach the standard of perfection, you better believe I'm not going to let you reach it. But in the gospel, we know that you can be flawed but focused. Who was more flawed than Peter or Paul? But they were focused on one thing. They were united by their mission. And this community, this flawed community, I said this flawed community. You forget, I've seen this community from two sides. I've seen it from this position and I've seen it from my brother's position. This flawed community, it's one saving grace is that it is focused on God's mission. And when we are focused, that makes up for everything else. Does it mean that we shouldn't try to get better? Absolutely. But when we are focused, God dispenses the resources of heaven to help us. We are flawed, but we are focused. Now let me tell you what we're focused on. We're focused on students. Amen. Draw that circle that I talk about and put a student in the center of it. That's why Oakwood exists. We exist for students. Students like Devante Royal, who came here from Florida, who's not even a Seventh-day Adventist, but his cousin Darnell, who works for Thompson Foods, was so impressed by the community, who is also a non-Adventist, that he said to the young man, he said, you know something? You need to come to Oakwood. And Devante, where are you? He is here today. There he is. And we wish to acknowledge him. And we are glad that you are here at Oakwood University. We exist for students. Students, I said students, like Felicia Uth, Felicia Uth, who is from Canada, of Cambodian extraction, who went to Chinook Winds SDA school, but began reading and researching 
about Oakwood University. And one day when I was in Canada, the pastor, Pastor Ishmael Ali, he said, I've got this young lady, she should be at Oakwood. I text her, enrollment management, and enrollment management does a wonderful job in following up on students. I forwarded the name to enrollment management. They did their work. You know, uh, somebody said, there is no limit to the good that can be done when we don't care who gets the credit. Enrollment management did a phenomenal job. And today, she is a freshman at Oakwood University. Felicia, where are you? I saw you somewhere today. There she is. We exist for students like this. Students like Tiffany Jackson from Sacramento, California, who is a freshman. She was discouraged by people in her community. Tiffany was unsure if she wanted to make Oakwood University her home away from home, especially seeing that her FAFSA, her FAFSA just wasn't being sent to the school. And after many department calls, many calls to the Department of Education um, and, and our financial aid department, and our admissions staff, uh, and countless attempts, we were finally able to get it. And now Tiffany is enrolled here from Sacramento, where she is a freshman theology major intending to be a powerful evangelist ushering in the second coming of the Lord. Where's Tiffany? Tiffany, where are you? I saw you. There she is. Let me just tell you, everybody, as I wrap this up, like defenders, we can be flawed. Like the defenders, we can be flawed, but focused on our students and our mission. Education right now is in a season of disruption. And I want to say to you that God has brought each of you here for such a time as this. The educational journey is not for the faint of heart. Our work will get more challenging, not less. When free education is being offered in so many communities, when communities are resource challenged, when private education is under fire, when you feel like you are grinding uphill, weary and tired, don't fall out. Don't burn out. Don't give out. Don't drop out. But like the faithful, stand up and stand out. And let us work while the day is at hand. For the night comes when no one can work. This is not the time to push the eject button. But today I want to invite you as we unite for mission to buckle your seatbelt. For we are in for a roller coaster ride. Forget and forgive your own flaws and failings. Forget and forgive the flaws and failings of others. Flee gossip. Lift up your eyes and offer total praise because if it had not been for the Lord, God placed you here for a purpose. So strap yourself to his mission. Lock arms with the person next to you because nothing, nothing, I said nothing, nothing is more powerful than a people who are united for their mission. May God bless you. May God bless America and may God bless Oakwood University. The power of a people united can aptly be demonstrated when we raise our voices in song. So we ask that when we get to the final chorus of this very familiar tune that you'll stand and join us in singing glory, glory, hallelujah, His truth is marching on.
guests and friends who have been here with us today. We know that you're on very tight timelines, Dr. Houston, and so we would like to have, Javon, would you please usher Dr. Houston and the team out? They start promptly at 11.30 again. We also want to take a moment, everyone, as they're dismissing. If you've appreciated their being here, would you join me, please, in expressing that? Thank you. Now, we want to take a moment to in silence before we do our consecration. And we've got it organized in a way that it's going to move very efficiently. We would like to take a moment in remembrance of those who once were among us. I will not call all their names, but you know them because you bear them on your heart. A moment, those who started the school year with us but are no longer here. Let's have a moment of silence, please. Thank you. Would you be seated, please? And Pastor Bird will guide us through this service. After we have had the invocation, welcome, our litany, challenging address of our university president. After we've read papers, done research projects, our faculty has taught and prepared. I just still believe in the old line that you have to have a talk with Jesus because he makes everything all right. Our university administration sets aside this time as we begin the academic year to allow us, the campus family, to ask the Lord to set aside our lives individually and collectively for God's service. Since 1896, we've taught at this institution. We enter to learn, depart to serve. Our program reads that the purpose of the anointing service, the Greek words for anoint are creo, which means to smear or rub with oil, and by implication to consecrate for office or religious service, and alepho, which means to anoint. In Bible times, people were anointed with oil to signify God's blessing or call on that person's life. A person was anointed for a special purpose, to be a king, to be a prophet, to be a builder, to be God's servant. 
Anointing should not be viewed as a magic potion. The oil itself does not have any power. It is only God who can anoint a person for a specific purpose, which then makes the oil a symbol of God's anointing. And so today we come at the beginning of this academic year to ask God to set this campus family, our administrators, our faculty, our staff, our area pastors, most importantly, our students, that we might come aside now and say, Lord, take us, use us, and use us for anything you want. In the midst of this service, there are some of us who are going through some challenges. And we take those challenges today to the Lord in prayer as well. And so as we begin in this most sacred ceremony, I invite our university president, Dr. Leslie and Pollard, if he would join me here. Our vice president for missions and spiritual life, Dr. David Richardson, if he would join me here. And then I would like to invite my colleagues, our Old Huntsville area pastors, our School of Religion faculty, and our Office of Spiritual Life chaplains. My colleagues at this time would take their places in the sanctuary. Today, as we engage in this special service, this special ceremony of being set aside for God's purpose, if you want his anointing, his power, his oil, his Holy Spirit in your life, if you have a special need, a special burden that you're saying, Lord, this academic year, I need you to break the chains in my life, the challenges that I experience, and I need anointing, I need your sealing, I need your oil, your Holy Spirit today. We invite you to participate. We begin first by inviting our our different schools, our deans, our faculty, and our staff. Today, if you would like to be set aside for God's service, we invite you to stand at this time. And where it is most appropriate for you either to come to the front, here in front of our pastors and our chaplains in our school of religion faculty you may do so or if you want to go in the aisles we invite you to make your way in the aisles in front of one of our pews and just remain standing until we engage in the rite of anointing we invite our students from oakwood elementary academy middle school as well as our students from oakwood university if you too would like to engage in this special, sacred calling, we invite everyone just to line first. At this time, students. I invite our administrators on our pulpit to stand. And if we would just stand in the aisles and at the appropriate time, we shall anoint. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Some things we have not. Some things we have not. Because we have as not. When we have a friend who cares. We're praying. Our Father in heaven, we've come for another academic year to be set aside for your service. And so, Lord, without the multiplicity of words, the vials of oil that your servants hold, there is no magic potion in these vials. But God, we simply believe in the symbol of this oil 
symbolic of your Holy Spirit, that Lord, we want to be sealed with your power. That God, everything we do and say this academic year would bring glory to your name. That God, we might have a power, power from your Holy Ghost and power of a people united today. So set Dr. Pollard aside. Set the administrators, the faculty, the staff, the students aside. God, do something at Oakwood this year you've never done before. May we see Jesus and may we never be the same again. So God, as my colleagues and I, as we now apply this oil to the foreheads of your people, from the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet, Lord, use us up, protect us. Give us your power, power to teach, power to preach, power to witness, power to share. Because Lord, we want and need your power to save. And so we want to be anointed today. So Lord, we engage in this ceremony. But not only do we want anointing, oh God, we want, oh Lord, to consecrate and dedicate ourselves to your service. Our Father, not God, as we linger just a little while longer, yes, we're grateful and we receive the anointing of God on our lives this morning. But also, Lord, we commit ourselves to you as faculty and staff and students. We ask you this morning for fresh wind and fresh fire, Lord. We ask you for the power of God to be upon us on our lives in our classrooms. And Lord, we ask you, Lord, for a double portion of your Holy Spirit. Rain down this morning on us, O oh God. Thank you for the anointing. Yes, we commit and dedicate ourselves to you on this day. In Jesus' name, amen. As we return to our seats, Some things we have not. Some things we have not. Because we have not. When we have a friend who first. Thank you, Dr. Pollard, for reminding us that we might be flawed, but we must remain focused. We will remain seated for the recessional as the platform party recesses out of the sanctuary, followed by these deans, faculty, and staff, and then we shall consider ourselves dismissed. Dismissed.